Hello and welcome to this AutoCAD tutorial video for AutoCAD 2017. In this video we're going to be considering layers, how to create them, uh, how to differentiate between them and what we use them for. So layers are one of the most useful things uh, that we can use in AutoCAD because it can help us to keep things very well organized, uh, very neat uh, and while it takes uh, a few moments to get it set up at the start of a drawing uh, it really is worth that little bit of extra time because it's going to uh, save you time down the line especially on very large very complex drawings so when we talk about layers uh, we're particularly going to be interested in uh, this uh, panel here uh, we've got a few different things here you might have noticed from previous videos uh, this has been uh, largely set to zero uh, it's not ideal practice to draw things on the zero layer this is just the default layer that's created uh, when you start a new drawing so what we're going to look at first of all is how to create new layers so if you click on layer properties here that brings out the layer palette so what we've got here uh, is we'll have a list of the layers that exist within this drawing uh, so at the moment this uh, there's only the one layer so that's uh, layer zero uh, and now what we can do is we can create new layers if you click on this button here uh, that will create a new layer so when you create a new layer it's immediately uh, asks you what do you want to uh, call this layer uh, so we're going to name this layer object object so that's our first layer moving along here there's various options uh, you can turn the layer on and off that's quite useful uh, for very complex drawings because sometimes the uh, drawings can become quite crowded with detail and you might just want to isolate a particular uh, item uh, and when you do that you can turn layers off uh, and just have certain layers on which can be uh, extremely useful uh, so you can turn them on and off here there's also shortcuts for most of these uh, up uh, behind here uh, so in that drop down bar you can uh, turn layers on and off you can freeze and thaw them and lock and unlock them uh, so we can uh, do that from from up here we don't have to click into this uh, palette all the time other options that we've got in here uh, we can change the color uh, so at the moment we've got it set to white so uh, we're quite happy we can just leave that as white at the moment uh, what we're really interested in is uh, these boxes here so we've got line type now at the moment we've got continuous when you click on that you'll notice that it brings up uh, this dialog box uh, and the only option that we've actually got in here at the moment is continuous uh, so that's the only option we can choose uh, but more on that in a moment when we create our next layer so we'll just cancel that for now and we've also got here line weight now this is set to default uh, I believe default is 0.35 for AutoCAD uh, I'm not 100% sure about that but I think that's that's what it's set to um, generally speaking on a drawing uh, on a technical drawing uh, for a machine part say uh, you will have two uh, thicknesses of line uh, and those thicknesses will generally be in the ratio of two to one so in other words one will be twice as thick as the other uh, and they're referred to as uh, narrow line and wide line uh, generally speaking a recommendation of 0.7 mil and 0.35 mil are generally used um, but uh, for the purposes of this course I've been producing a lot of A4 drawings and I think that that looks a little bit large uh, a little bit too thick and it makes the drawing look a little bit um, unprofessional I think so I think uh, for uh, the time being uh, I've been using a line weight of 0.25 and 0.5 so for my object layer uh, for my layer which is basically the outlines of objects and visible edges of objects uh, we're going to set that to 0.35 so that'll be our object uh, layer there so that's basically going to be the outline of the object the physical parts of the object we've also got a transparency setting here uh, so you can make it you can gray it in and out uh, we won't mess around with that at the moment uh, and this one here will come in quite useful a little bit later on uh, because this uh, determines whether the uh, layer gets plotted or not when you go to print it uh, and that really is very very useful uh, in certain circumstances as we'll see a little bit later on uh, so that's a, a new layer that we've selected uh, we might want to select uh, a new layer so let's select a new layer and we'll call this one uh, center line so there's our center line layer now the center line layer 
uh, we'll keep the same color we're not going to change the colors too much again in technical drawings you don't generally speak you need to use lots of different colors if you're doing uh, perhaps architects drawings or building design drawings building services drawings uh, then you might need to use lots of different colors uh, to differentiate between different things uh, but here we we're happy just to continue working with uh, uh, white as the color uh, now what we'll do here for a center line, uh, generally speaking we use a narrow line, uh, so we will set this to uh, 0.25, I just realized I've made a mistake, that should be set to 0.5 that one now, so we'll change that to 0.5. So we've got our thick line of 0.5 and we've got our narrow line of 0.25. Now the other thing we want to do with the center line is we want to make it so that it is uh, different uh, in terms of its continuity. So if we select here now, uh, when we click there it brings open this dialog box. Now we've said already we've only got one option in here which is the solid line uh, at the moment so we want to bring in some new ones. So to do that you select load and what that does is it brings up uh, the line types that are available to you uh, that come preloaded on AutoCAD but they're not automatically loaded into each drawing. You have to tell uh, CAD that you want to use that particular line for this particular drawing. There's all kind of international standard drawings for, for different things, uh, for borders and, and such like. Uh, so for a center line you see here we've got uh, center and then we've got center 2 which will make your line uh, half the uh, spacing of the dashes uh, and then we've got center times two which makes the uh, spacing doubled. Uh, this can be quite useful if you have quite a small drawing uh, to use the center uh, 0.5 because uh, sometimes this comes out as a solid black line because uh, it's too small to, to get that detail in. So uh, we'll select center here and we want to load that one so we click OK and then what it does is it loads it up uh, into uh, here so this this line is now loaded for this drawing we could use this uh, for different layers if we wanted to for some reason uh, so we can uh, what what you need to be careful of as well is when you load this up is that very often um, well it, it never automatically selects it It'll, it's always on the default setting that you came into so what you'll need to do is make sure that you click that uh, and then click OK very often I load that up and forget to actually specify it as the uh, as the, the line type that I want to use so there's uh, two examples of layers so far. So let's do a couple more uh, examples. So let's create a new layer. So here we've got another new layer. Uh, and this layer uh, we'll call hatch lines. Hatch lines. Uh, now for hatch lines you can see it's, it's defaulted automatically to the previous uh, line type that we put in here. Uh, now for hatch lines you want hatch lines to generally speaking be continuous so we want our solid line selected there uh, and they're normally a narrow line so we can keep that on 0.25. Uh, we'll also create uh, a cutting plane so we'll create a cutting plane as well. Uh, now a cutting plane uh, wants to be a uh, narrow line So we've got our uh, cutting plane set to 0.25 which is right. It's quite interesting when you start looking into uh, cutting planes and standards and <coughs> for different lines and things. Uh, in this instance uh, for a cutting plane the ISO standard is uh, the same as a center line so it should be uh, a long dash and a short dash. Uh, but just for the, the sake of uh, using something a little bit different here all organizations end up using their own uh, sort of standards anyway that they work to. Uh, we'll use a phantom line here uh, which is a long dash and two double dashes. Uh, we'll use that one just so you can see that again there's other options that are available so we'll use that one for a cutting plane. Uh, we'll also have a hidden layer. Uh, now the hidden layer should be a thin line again 0.25 uh, and the uh, line type for a hidden uh, layer. There is actually a, a hidden option here uh, that we can use which is this one. So hidden there uh, is just a dashed line which is uh, fairly standard uh, in most international standards and also for most organizations they'll use uh, just dashes for a hidden line so we can put that in and set that to hidden. Okay. One other thing that uh, can be quite useful 
um, will be uh, construction lines. Uh, so we'll have a construction uh, layer. Uh, now the good thing about using a separate layer for the construction, we want uh, a continuous line for this one, so we'll use that one. Uh, but we want the line weight, we'll set this to zero. Now what that does is it means that there's no way that will ever actually end up being printed by mistake on any drawing. Uh, and it means that the lines stay extremely thin however far you zoom in. Uh, so they're always easily identifiable as construction lines, which is pretty cool. Uh, so that's that, and just for the sake of argument, we'll create one more, uh, which we'll call dimensions. Uh, so that's our dimensions layer. Uh, we can set our dimensions layer. That wants to be a thin line, 0.25, and we want to have continuous lines for that, so we'll leave that on that. So you can see fairly quickly we've set up uh, several different layers using different standards, uh, and we've got all these options available to us. So if we close this uh, panel now, and open up here, you can see in this drop-down menu we've got all of our uh, lines available to us. So if we want to draw something, so uh, let's just take something pretty circle, let's just draw a circle. Uh, we've got, uh, we're on our object layer, so this, this is key, you've got to keep on setting uh, your uh, layer to the layer that you want to draw on. What, what ends up happening is that you end up accidentally drawing things on the wrong layer and you've got to go back and correct it. If you, if you don't notice in time, which isn't difficult, but it is time consuming, so we want to avoid that where we can. So let's just create a circle. Uh, let's set its uh, radius at 50. So there's our circle. Um, now, if we apply, uh, say, a center line to this, so let's apply a center line. There is a tool for doing this, uh, but let's just, for the sake of argument, uh, create a center line. Okay, so we'll, we've set this to center line, so let's put a line on here. Let's start it off there, and put it to there, and start another one off there, and put it to there. Again, this is just rough. Obviously, this would look a lot better than it would extend beyond it as well. So there's our um, center line. Now, what you'll notice immediately is that these are the same thicknesses, which is obviously not what we're aiming for. That's not what we've spent all this time uh, building this up to do. So what we're going to do now, uh, if you select down here, show hide line weight, and of course, if that's not showing, go to your customize button uh, and make sure that your line weight is selected there and if we turn that on you can immediately see that we've got uh, different thicknesses sometimes if you again if your drawing is getting quite crowded uh, you might want to just turn that off uh, so you can see things a little bit more clearly uh, but it's generally a good idea to have it on where you are dealing with different things so you can see there that the center line is a different thickness to the uh, object line uh, and we can go to uh, say the um, Let's do a dimension on here, so let's uh, stick on a uh, radial dimension. So what's the radius of this? Again, you can see that that's set so that it's nice uh, nice and thin, which looks uh, really good and neat. So you can see very clearly from this, uh, if we wanted to put a, a hidden line on here for some reason, uh, let's say there's uh, some kind of um, section that's cut out of this, so, uh, something like this. Uh, an off-center keyway. I don't know why you'd ever have such a thing, uh, but you can see that that is has become dashed. The reason that that part isn't dashed is that the line is too short uh, for it to achieve that. So it's basically it's starting off with a, a long dash and ending with a with a dash, uh, and it's it's just not big enough to show uh, that that is a dashed line. But because it's attached to that one, it, it's pretty clear that that's what it is. Uh, so you can adjust the scale on these as well uh, to make them uh, appear more dashed or less dashed. So if we uh, take that one and type in PR for properties uh, and go to line type scale uh, if we set that to uh, 0.25 then you can see it's become more dashed uh, so that might be uh, something that you want to consider doing if you've got quite a small detail that needs to be shown uh, in that way so that's how uh, layers work um, they are really really uh, spectacularly helpful and you'll be using them a lot uh, as uh, as you progress in your CAD studies. Uh, so I hope this video has been useful. Uh, we'll show the actual function of uh, a lot of these things when we start doing uh, proper drawings, uh, how they work and uh, what they do. Uh, we'll include that as part of a future video. For now it's enough to know that that's how you create layers and that's how you switch between them. Uh, so that's, uh, that's as far as we need to go with this video. So thank you very much, look forward to seeing you on the next one and goodbye.